Well, the Singapore market has been one of the uh, key outperforming markets in the last three weeks after the announcement of the vaccine. And that's because Singapore is seen as a value market, right? You have basically the three banks comprising about 40% of the index. And certainly a vaccine announcement is clearly positive for Singapore because of the fact that we are very uh, dependent on others. We are very open. And therefore, if a vaccine program can be uh, can be uh, uh, can can run um, very um, um, sooner rather than later. Then that basically means that there's a potential for Singapore to actually open up sooner rather than later, and that in turn is actually very positive. Um, even at the current levels here, um, we still think that Singapore is actually uh, quite attractively uh, uh, valued, and we do think that Singapore could actually potentially gain by another eight to ten percent uh, based on the current valuations. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what about uh, the? news on hand, which is essentially uh, the rollout of the digital banking licenses. What does it mean uh, for revamping the banking sector in India, uh, in uh, Singapore rather, and further liberalizing it? I think the impact on a, on a short to medium term basis is likely to be muted, given the fact that banking is actually quite different from um, the telecoms market that um, a lot of people are comparing it to. Uh, remember a couple of years back when we rolled out the uh, MVNOs, or the Mo Mobile Virtual Network Operators, uh, there was a lot of competition eating into the uh, telecoms sector. But we do feel differently for banking because of the fact that banking needs a lot more trust because it's money that you're talking about. Um, and, um, and where the uh, digital banking licenses is concerned, there is no physical branch, no ATM. There is no person that you can actually get hold of if something goes wrong. And I think that's likely to actually set some people back to a certain level. But I do think that the deposit rates are likely to be far more attractive because that's the only way you can get depositors to actually put their money with you if the fact that you need to compensate for, a, a for, for, for the trust that, that needs to be built in on a short-term basis. So I do think that competition on a short-term basis is likely to be muted in that sense. Okay. Where does that leave you then, Kelvin, on financials in the traditional Singapore sense? Um, we still do like the financials. I do think that um, at this point in time, even though they've run, actually run up very strongly in the last three weeks, that they're still attractively valued. And I think um, given what's happened in China with the CBIRC coming up with some regulations on, the, uh, on limiting the, uh, the activities that the fintechs can actually uh, undertake, we do think that there'll be some form of limitations coming through at some point uh, when the fintech industry gets a little bit more mature in that sense. So I don't think that on a longer term basis, it is necessarily bad for the banks. In fact, it could be the, um, the wake-up call that some of the local banks will need in order to actually compete more effectively with the um, digital fintech industry in the sense that they need to actually boost up the digital offerings uh, in that way.